Welcome back to another ride home. I was at work today and I was just uh, thinking about a life, hello, a life philosophy that I apparently have quietly lived by. Never really talked about it or even thought it was a philosophy or even identified it actually. But nonetheless, as I look back across my life I realized that I have lived by this philosophy and I don't think it was a great philosophy I don't think it did me any favors really um, anyways we'll get on the road here and uh, we'll talk more about that as we get going okay what philosophy am I talking about? I'm talking about a one and done philosophy or a one and done mindset. And like I said, it seems like I've chosen to live my life by that mindset. And honestly, I'm not sure why I have or where I picked it up from or how far back I was before I adopted it but it seems strange to me that I did because maybe I didn't recognize it in the moment but being 56 and looking back it seems like it didn't do me any favors this one and done mindset and I'll give you some examples of what I'm talking about, why it didn't seem to work out for me. And I guess maybe why I think about it now more than ever. Years ago when I was with my first wife, <clears throat> we lived in Denver, Colorado. And I went to school for heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. See, I knew I didn't have enough education to get a decent job, so I wanted to improve my odds, and I, and I went to HVAC school. And I worked real hard at it. I you know, had 100% attendance throughout the whole thing, made sure I was you know, close to the top of my class. And the idea was that I would join the pipe fitters union get an apprenticeship and make something of myself you know get get a good job and make good money and raise my family and instead what happened was the first real offer that kind of came around was working on refrigeration units on uh, semis like meat packers and things like that and I thought that was going to be great. That, I mean, it, it had ju just everything. But then they found out I was in the National Guard and they found out when my uh, two week uh, deployment for summer camp was <clears throat> and they didn't hire me. And they didn't hire me specifically because of that, which I thought was a pretty bold move because that's technically illegal. A guardsman cannot be discriminated against because of his service and I believe that includes they can't be uh, disqualified from employment because of that service but I was young and patient didn't really have you know any real good uh, fight back there so I mean I just but you know I was young and impatient and uh, you know didn't fight for that job I just felt like, okay, well, I guess this isn't the one that I, that I need to be at. And I ended up driving a pickup truck for, let me think about this here for a second. I believe it was a company called Crab, C-R-A-B-B, -B, Crab Plumbing and Heating. And I was delivering parts to the pipe fitters on actual job sites and I was making like next to nothing, like like 
the, 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 the money spent going to school and, and trying to get into an apprenticeship and all that kind of stuff ended up being in, in you know, of course, it's a union job, so you, of course you got to start at the bottom. I get that. But my financial situation, in my estimation, wasn't going to wait for me to, to get into an actual apprenticeship. I mean, who knows how long I was going to be driving that pickup truck, but I did it. I did stick with it for at least a while. And finally, you know, it just looked like I was going to go nowhere. That this would, that this whole thing was just a huge waste. And now see a smart person would have found a way to make this kind of stuff work. You know, there had to be other options. I mean, it's a city of Denver, it's huge. But nope, I won and done it. I threw that entire opportunity you know, that entire education, that entire effort just went down. I just walked away from it. You know, eventually I ended up roofing, but there was a lot of uh, heartache and headache and, you know, gol oh golly, what am I going to do for work, you know, now in between there. And roofing wasn't great, of course, great paying at the beginning anyway. I mean, I really had to hang with that before I could finally make it pay for itself. I think another time one and done didn't do me any good was uh, before, even before that, uh, I went to, I was going to apply, I went to apply for the Denver Fire Department and I studied for their exam, I took their test and I was, oh gosh, again top tier, I, was, I wasn't a hundred percent on the test, I was somewhere between 95 and 98. I want to say 98 rings a bell for me, but uh, I, I don't know that I did that good, but I know I was above 98 or 95%. I know I was above 95%. Well, I didn't get that position. Why? I was the wrong skin color. Racism got me, but at that point they were calling it uh, they, they were still calling it a diversity hire. A, a uh, man with a darker skin tone than I got the job even though his test scores weren't as high. They were under these quotas that were rolling around in the early 90s that said you have to hire a certain percentage of a certain kind of person or else you know you're not going to be legit. And so even though I had a higher test score they got the guy with the color so that they could earn that so they could uh, fit those quotas now was the guy unqualified I'm not going to say that I just know through shall we say word of mouth that I had the higher test score and he took he got the job not because he not, he wasn't like underqualified by any means he just he just didn't score as good as I did so I walked. So I was so disgusted with that, I walked away from that. Now, should I have retested later when the testing was around again? Should I have kept trying at it till I got in? I mean, yeah, probably. But understand, I never really had a goal as to what I wanted to do in life. I was just, you know, stabbing at things and seeing what would stick. You know, people. You know, no one ever asked, what do you want to do with your life? And it's a good thing because um, had they asked, I, w I would have just shrugged my shoulders. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with my life. You know, I never had and never had the seed planted for an ambition or a goal to try to attain. I never had anything developed in me skill wise that would lead me to one thing or another I was naturally good at mechanics but yeah I know I never saw that was never encouraged to follow that path as a means of making a living I just say I was naturally good at mechanics because that's what my ASFAB was the highest score on and I guess that was from uh, starting taking tearing apart bicycles putting them back together you know hot rotting in my teen years you know tearing down engines and rebuilding them 
you know, stuff like that. Probably should have pursued that, but again, there was never any encouragement to pursue anything, really. Let's see, then I tried for the Denver Police Department and uh, was, <laughs> I still think this is funny, was still, was told I was shaped too much like an avocado. I was always kind of a chubby kid, but was never completely out of shape. I mean, I could climb mountains like crazy. It just, my body shape was always kind of, you know, frumpy, frumpy. Well, anyway, Denver police, you know, said I was shaped too much like an avocado and I would have to get in better shape before I attempted their uh, academy. I sat there and looked at the guy. I remember I just looked at the guy and laughed. I said, have you seen the cops out on the street? <laughs> They're not in good shape at all. Well, he didn't think that was funny. So I walked away from that. Let's see what other opportunities came around and left because I had no patience for for that. I don't think there was anything more. I think by, by the time I got a certain stage in life, I realized that I couldn't keep doing that and I had to just stick with something. And that's how I ended up sticking with roofing until I finally was making it pay. And then after that came factory work, which I just kind of stumbled into. And with the last, oh, 30 years being a machinist. Again, not never a goal that I tried to become, just something I stumbled into and stuck with because it was convenient, had benefits, paid well. Um, you know, again, nothing. I think the last real one and done thing that happened that actually affected life in any significant way was prior to my divorce to my first wife we did go to uh, or we did have a, a, a type of marriage counseling right I went through a specific class she went through a specific class and you know these were attempts to identify our individual issues you know with the idea that we could fix those individual issues then and apply those fixes to our marriage, then, then our marriage would survive. But, you know, it didn't work out that way. But I remember there was talk of, you know, possible reconciliation before the divorce. There was talk about going through marriage counseling again and trying it again. And my attitude was pretty sour. And I was like thinking to myself, you know, Went through marriage counseling once, didn't work. Why do I want to go through a failed endeavor again just to have it not work again? And so I, uh, so I uh, declined the uh, offer to go back into marriage counseling again. One and done. We did it once, it didn't work, why do it again? And, you know, in the last 25 years, I have abandoned that philosophy as well, have not been through marriage counseling again, but my wife and I, we just uh, celebrated uh, 20 years together, marriage, not too long ago, and we've been together a little bit longer than that, but 20 years married, and uh, so, the, so, you know, I've, I've all but abandoned the whole one and done thing. because it hasn't been a helpful <laughs> philosophy to live by. I'm not going to say it's always bad, but I am going to say, as I kind of finish up my thoughts on this random topic, as I'm, you know, just talking to myself on my way home, that there are times where a one and done mentality could be helpful. And I'm just saying, in, in most of my cases, I don't think it was. And so what I would encourage you to do if you're younger is I would encourage you to gain wisdom. Get some discernment about you. Figure out when a one and done is a good thing 
and abandon it when it's not. Because I don't think it's always a bad thing, and I know for a fact it's not always a good thing. But you and your life and your life circumstance will have to make those choices. I'm just saying, don't be all of one way or the other. You got to understand your situation. I think I want to talk a little bit about what it looks like to not want and done it. So my wife and I, my current wife, her, uh, her and I started having some issues as couples will, especially couples that have baggage with them. And a lot of those issues and a lot of those arguments really started looking a lot like the same kinds of issues and arguments that my first wife and I had. And, and so much so that I started, I literally would hear my wife say the exact same things to me my ex-wife would say and I would hear myself responding to her the exact same way I would respond to my ex-wife. And that really caught my attention. And to make a long, long story short there, there were several times where my wife and I would find ourselves in a discussion after a lot of heated and spicy uh, discussions took place and we were just sitting there calmly like around the kitchen table or something and we would just ask ourselves each other very honest questions like is this worth continuing do we still want to do this what is our what is the point point? and honestly if I'd still had the one and done mentality at this point I would have probably said there isn't a point. This is not, you know, this isn't what we either of us signed up for. This is awful. We're just making ourselves miserable. Let's just, just end it here and be done with this because it's obviously not what we thought it would be. But we didn't do that and I didn't do that. And we chose to dig our heels in and find a way to make this work. And part of how we did that was we decided that the idea and the institution and the act of marriage was more important than our individual desires and our individual wants to a to a point right and uh, and we decided that our marriage needed to be an example to each of our children because she has children and I have children from previous relationship and we need to just show our children that even a marriage as baggage riddled and as, you know, kind of dysfunctional as ours, that when a proper mindset and an attitude is applied to it, it will still work. It will still come through the fire and we'll still be standing on the other side. And now all those kids are grown and they're out of the house and my wife and I are still together. So that was, a, that was a good turnaround from my previous one and done mentality and you know, to not a one and done mentality. And I suppose another one that relates directly to motorcycles is my accident that was, gosh, three years ago now? Almost three years ago, actually three years ago this month. So, um, if I had a one and done mentality, I might not be on a motorcycle right now. And so I'm really happy that I didn't one and done motorcycle riding. Uh, in fact, I was ready to get back on the bike even before I was ready to get back on the bike. I was, I could barely walk and I was wanting to find another bike to get onto. And so I'm very happy to have overcome that challenge. 
Anyway, those were just a couple of couple of uh, couple of examples of the opposite of a one and done mentality. I think as I close this video out, I want to piggy piggy tail onto my last video. A final a, a thought about that. Now, my last video was about the Harley Davidson going woke. And for you, that was a week ago. For me, that was just last night. <laughs> um, not even 24 hours ago. <laughs> and so, it's, my, the, my thoughts on that video are still fresh. And I wish I would have included the following at the end of that video. But it's kind of late to do it now. So I'm going to do it here. And if you watched last week's video, you'll, you'll understand why I'm going to say what I'm going to say. If you didn't, then go back and watch that. Anyways, the, the boycotting of Harley Davidson. How successful can it actually be since it's not quite the same as like boycotting a beer company? And so I think that the way a boycott of a Harley Day of Harley Davidson would look to where it's successful to where it really shakes them up and grabs their attention is if all the motorcycle clubs the MCs out there drop the brand and why is that significant because you see all the MCs out there are almost exclusively Harley not not completely but almost and the reason why is that American motorcycle clubs have two basic requirements that I'm aware of from watching Demons Row TV about the motorcycles that are ridden. It has to be American made and it has to be a specific size of engine. And so if all the MCs, we're talking Hells Angels, Mongols, Diablos, you know, all those guys, large and small, one percenters and the, and the average small club, if they all went to Harley and said, you know what, we're ditching the brand and we're moving the Indian because you guys are too woke. Holy smokes. If the MCs would unify and do that, that would end Harley's wokeness right now. Right now, without a doubt. Now, Indian would love it. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand if that happened like over a month's time or a week's time where the head of each MC sent notice to Harley and saying, we are selling our bikes, we're trading them in, we're getting Indians. Wow. Wow, that would be a revolution. And the other thing I got to say is the, uh, the getting rid of the CEO for Harley, that's not going to work, guys. That's not going to work. You have to get rid of the entire board. Everybody on the board to the CEO are woke. Um, if you get rid of the CEO, all the CEO... All that woke board is going to do is get another woke CEO. So you got to get rid of the whole packet. So anyway, that is my final thought. I'm going to shut this video down now. And you all have a great day. <laughs>